We are The God Culture, a group of independent researchers with no affiliation to any denomination, nor organization, nor YouTube channel, nor Facebook, whatsoever. We read the word and we test it as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. We just covered and proved that the Hittikel River in Genesis 2, nor in Daniel 10.4, the only two times it's ever mentioned in the Bible, is not the Tigris River. And there is just no making such assumption. This will prove that even further while also mapping out Shem's full mapping that his initial division of the earth between his sons. In parts three and four, we fully map out Noah's division between his three sons, so all of Shem's territory, as well as Japheth and Ham. And it proves to be the entire earth divided between his three sons, not just the Middle East. And it is brilliant, the descriptions of rivers like the River Tina, which is described in such detail it can only be the rivers flowing that actually split Europe and Asia today, to this day, in Moscow, which is why you have part of Russia being in Shem's territory in Asia and part of it in Europe, which is Japheth. And by the way, Russia should not be in Shem's territory because Japheth does not belong there. It actually also led us to locating the Garden of Eden, which we covered in part 12 of Solomon's Gold series, in the Philippines. And that is well confirmed now at this point. Now let's drill down a little deeper with a mapping of Shem's division of his territory. Initially, between his sons, they do end up spreading out further. If you follow this mapping, you quickly learn some things that are now set straight. One of those is the Tigris River is not the Hittikel River. Nope, not even in Jubilees, but actually identified by another name right here in the book of Jubilees, and it matches the name used 27 times in the Old Testament of the modern canon, affirming that that was its name, the river. The Hittikel River is mentioned twice in this mapping, but massive problem if one tries to interchange and substitute that it is the Tigris River, you end up royally screwing up the direction, stumbling over territories given to other brothers. And Shem was far smarter than that. These are not so vague. They are direct and easy to follow when taking all such factors into account, which one must, rather than pull out a word mistranslated as Tigris, which is not its Hittikel. This is fascinating, and we pray you learn much from this. We look forward to hearing your thoughts. The Book of Jubilees, chapter 9, that's where this mapping occurs, starting in verse 2. This is Elam's portion. That would be the oldest, and he'll receive the largest portion for obvious reason. Now, not all of Shem's territory is divided in this age and in this mapping, and there's a reason for that, because his lineage will spread into the other territories over time, especially the prophetic Ophir, named after the region of light, where Yahuwah said, let there be light. Sheba, who is named after the first Sabbath, in the land of creation, same place as Ophir, and Havila, which is actually named after that exact land of Adam and Eve, Hava, Havila, same word. We cover that in Solomon's Gold series many times over. So let's read. To the east of the river Hittikal, there's that word, till it approacheth the east. Now, is that the Tigris? No, we'll show you. To the whole land of India. Now, Jubilees uses this name Hittikel twice, and we'll cover both here. Both in this context, which is perfect. It's the same mapping. The ancient river from Eden, the Hittikel, is on the bottom of the ocean floor. See our river from Eden video for evidence as we locate all five rivers from Eden on the bottom of the ocean floor, and they fit perfectly. Anyone locating only four rivers 
in their sad theories is not following the Bible and will never find the truth, nor are they even trying to, because they're not researching anything in order to come to such a conclusion. The river from Eden is one source, one river, it's the same word, Nahar, used in the other four rivers, Nahars. They're all Nahars, they're all the same. They're in the same paragraph, and you cannot change one to mean one thing and the others to mean something else. It just doesn't work that way. That's a fraudulent way to interpret the Bible. The Hidakal River, we map as the trenches on the bottom of the ocean floor, and the river from Eden is the mid-ocean ridge, which goes 65,000 kilometers around the whole earth, downhill and continuous. It is a river. We cover that in full. So, but all five rivers perfectly fit those descriptions in our theory, but not the others that are out there. Now, this Hidakal River comes up into the Persian Gulf and is covered by the Indian Ocean today. So essentially, this is the southern portion of Iran to India. Now, let's look at this, though, if in fact someone were to interpret this as the Tigris. And let's see if it works. You'll find it fails miserably. If we assumed an error that the Hidakal River was the Tigris River here, and applied it that way, here you go. It ruins the further mapping of both Asher and Arfaxad, two of the brothers of Elam. We're in Elam's territory right now. And by the way, Ophir's territory of Misha, the sons of Joktan from Genesis 10, Ophir, Sheba, Havilah, and his 13 siblings all in all, uh, it wouldn't work out because they lived in northwest Iran, Misha, which this would ruin. Of course, none of the other theories would ever fit there either. Also, this clunky view would mean Asher, who received several cities on the east of the Tigris River in his territory, ascends the Tigris River as well. Could not happen. It doesn't fit. So no, this cannot be the Tigris. He also, it cannot have the territory going from there to India. It doesn't work. It's clunky all around, and you've got overlaps, and it just is not accurate. It's actually very obvious, but you will not find another channel bothering with such facts, of course, as they love to make claims, not prove, and they don't disprove either. They've yet to do so on any point that they claim. Oh yeah, and Elam as a territory survives in history, even in modern times, right where we just mapped it, pretty much. Not all of it, but the portion in Iran has survived. And he does not have all the territory east of the Tigris, as this mapping would call for if the Tigris River was the Hidakal. It most certainly is not. It goes to the whole land of India, so Elam had all of India as well in the beginning. Now, Ham did build a city there in northern India after the flood. But see, then his descendants and he migrated to Shinar in Iraq on the Tigris River. But it is now Elam, that is his territory, in this separation of territories by Shem. This would be basically at the time of the Tower of Babel, after everyone had already migrated into Shinar, making those territories available. And on the Red Sea, on its coast, and the waters of Dedan. All the same system. This description is about waters. See, Noah has assigned water rights to, and of course, Shem continued that practice. And all the mountains of Mibri and Elah, now those are lost references in history, uh, but we can still pick this up, no problem. And all the land of Susan or Susa, Susa, Iran. Now, these two mountains are dead references to history, it seems, which is further evidence, by the way, that the Book of Jubilees is far older than just 150 BC when this area would have been much better known. 
as even Israelites had already lived in the area of Susa. They knew that area. Daniel lived in Susa. So, yes, we would have known if those names, but Daniel never picks up either of these names either. We don't hear about these mountains. We don't see them. They're dead references. Now, they must be referring to Iran, though, and Susa is a well-known territory in Iran. We already proved Darius, king of Persia, actually built a palace there. Daniel served there, according to his own words. That area in Iran is also referred to as Elam, even on most of the Bible maps and many things that you've seen, appropriately so in history. And all that is on the side of Farnak to the Red Sea and the River Tina. Again, dead reference, the River Tina. But the description, when you read it all and apply it, it actually can only be the Don and Volga rivers in Moscow. Nothing else fits. It's so specific. It's so brilliant. You have to go watch parts three and four for the full mapping and they'll make sense. Some say Farnak is Egypt, which makes sense, though we've never seen anything that really comes out and completely proves that, but it's not necessary. It's right next to Egypt, which includes the Sinai Peninsula, by the way, in history. That's part of Egypt, not part of Arabia. It would be modern Saudi Arabia, essentially, which is exactly what we've drawn. Farnak, also a dead reference, really. Regardless, we were just in Susa, and now we are traveling to the Red Sea. See, the directions that Noah gave and then Shem is giving are so specific, it's really difficult to take them out of context. Then, Shem is setting geographical boundaries for this part as the Red Sea on the west and the River Tina, which is the river that divides Europe. But he's not talking about going all the way up there because that would go over a bunch of other territories in order to get there. No, no, that doesn't work. What he's saying is geographically where the River Tina is, we've drawn a dotted line there so you can see it's very obviously lined up with the River Tina which is the rivers in Moscow, which flow all the way over to the Caspian Sea. Now, this sets the eastern border of Saudi Arabia. So, Saudi Arabia went to Elam. Oops, not to our Fox ad. So, you won't find Ophir and Sheba and Havila or Joktan, any of his sons, there. See, that is wrong. We've already proven that in Solomon's Gold series, but you see it further proven here. Now, they never lived in Saudi Arabia. That is Elam's territory. Next, we have Asher. You know his name as his territories become the core of Assyria in time, whose first capital was not Nineveh. Some think, oh, Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. It was at one time in history, but it actually had something like six different capitals uh, through its lifetime. Ashur is the original capital of Assyria. Why? Because the name Assyria is Ashur. Now check this out. All the land of Ashur and Nineveh and Shinar. Boom. Just identified. Three cities on the east side of the Tigris River. Problem. That means that can't be Elam's territory. Can it? Therefore, the Tigris River is not the Hittikel. Period. There's no way to make that work. Let's go further. And to the border of India. Now, if the Tigris is the Hittikel, basically you take this territory and you have just stepped all over Asher's territory and given it to Elam because we used the wrong reference. The Tigris River cannot be the Hittikel. It is not what it's saying. Simple solution, the Hidakel River is not the Tigris, period. And it ascends or climbs northward and skirts, well, what's that? The river, Ha Nahal. Gee, what river is he talking about? The river. Well, his territory, his cities, already ascend up the Tigris River on the east side. So that's 
the river. This is referring to, and again, history is overwhelmingly abundant, that Assyria or Asher most certainly has always been defined as that area as its seat, not the Euphrates. Here is Ha Nahal, which is fine as Nahal means to lead or guide to a watering place. It's a derivative of Nahar, river. But in the rest of scripture, it's Ha Nahar, the river. Yet, it's interpreted the river here as well, even in the English appropriately. So this refers to the Tigris River is the river. And see, this perfectly fits the Old Testament 27 times as well, calling the Tigris River the river. In fact, the last letter of this word is a lamed or L. And when you look at the way that it's formed, it could easily be mistaken and actually be a resh or R, depending on even the handwriting of the scribe. The two are very similar in appearance. So either way, but again, the L still works, so it doesn't matter. It's really still the same word, and it's interpreted the river appropriately regardless. In fact, the King James renders the river as the Tigris, which we proved in our last video 27 times. That's not a small mention. Why is it differentiated as the river and called out so? Because it is the beginning of the occult after the flood, the origin of mystery Babylon religion and society and everything else. In fact, Shinar is where the Tower of Babel was built in Asher's territory on the Tigris. No surprise the Bible would call it out as the river or the river of abomination. It is infamous in the wrong way and more so than the Euphrates. Also, we showed you the book of Tobit uses the word Tigris, T-Y-G-R-Y-S, rendered in Hebrew. So the Hebrews have such a word, too, for the name of this river in Hebrew as Tigris. As a lost tribe of Naphtali of the northern kingdom taken into Assyria on the Tigris, he lived in Nineveh on the Tigris River on the east bank, and Daniel never lived on the Tigris ever, as he lived on the Euphrates as a slave in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar and was then transferred to Iran to the palace of Susa, where Darius, the king of Persia, ruled near the Persian Gulf and on the river Ulai, where he had one vision before Daniel 10.4 the passage that also mentions Hittichel, which is not talking about the Tigris River. He was still over there next to the Persian Gulf, where in fact the ancient Hittichel runs on the bottom of the ocean floor, not the Tigris, where Daniel never lived. It doesn't work. Now for our fox sad, who has two lineages of renown according to scripture, especially Genesis 10. All the sons of Eber are called out very specifically as very important in Shem's lineage. His sons were Peleg and Joktan. So they're talking about all of their sons. Peleg, from which Abraham would restore covenant with Yahuwah, and then Isaac and Jacob, who would become known as Israel, and then they would eventually receive that promised land of Israel. But guess what? It was promised to Shem and to our Foxad, and that's why it's called the Promised Land. It really goes all the way back to there. Now, the other son was named Joktan of our Fox, well, of Eber, uh, all from our Foxad, all in the same lineage, so we're talking the same. Joktan, whose prophetically named sons, Ophir, Sheba, and Havilah, Ophir for the land of light, the region where Yahuwah said, let there be light. Sheba, whose name for the first Sabbath, where Adam actually created covenant with Yahuwah on the first Sabbath. And Havilah, which is the actual land 
of Adam and Eve in ancient times, named right after Eve, her Hebrew name is Hava, and as a variant, it means childbirth. Now, we cover that in detail in our Solomon's Gold series. That's why Genesis 10 calls out all the sons of Eber, all the Hebrews. They're all Hebrews. There's Israelite Hebrews, but then there's other Hebrews from Joktan. They're all from Eber. Here, their territory is confirmed, and Josephus agrees with Jubilees on this and with our interpretation. All the land of the region of the Chaldees to the east of the Euphrates. Again, Josephus identifies this as northern Afghanistan and northern Iran. Now remember, Genesis 10 then says they migrated from there to return to ancient Havilah, the land of creation. If you haven't watched Solomon's Gold series, we prove that thoroughly. Now there is a second territory for our fox set here. It's actually disconnected, and that's okay. Now this would become known as Israel, but let's see. So bordering on the Red Sea, this is defining the southern border of the territory, and all the waters of the desert close to the tongue of the sea which looks towards Egypt. So from the Red Sea close to the Sinai Peninsula, you know where King Solomon built a new port and navy at Ezion Gabir in what the Bible calls Elath or Elam, would be right next to it, Saudi Arabia. See, Saudi Arabia went to Elam, not to Arphaxad. Therefore, Ophir, Sheba, Havilah, and Joktan never lived in Saudi Arabia. It does not work. Now for the northern border, all the land of Lebanon. We know where that is. Lebanon's well recorded even today. Sinir, Amana, to the border of the Euphrates. Now, no, not the border of the Euphrates to the east all the way in Iraq, but the Euphrates to the north along with Lebanon, Sinir, and Amman. It's giving you the direction, showing that's the northern border and then basically the land of Israel in between. All places well-preserved in history, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan. Again, this is Israel. Canaan, son of Ham, stole it, though. So this territory, our Foxad's inheritance, did not live there until the days of Abraham. And it really wasn't restored until the days of, really, Joshua. So understand the history behind that. But the land was promised initially to Shem, who promised it to his son, our Foxad. Now, here we go. This is Aram's territory, and now we see the Hittikel mentioned yet again. Now, Aram, this is verse 5. All the land of Mesopotamia between the Hittikel, now I know the interpretation says Tigris when you look up the Book of Jubilees typically, but when you look at the Hebrew, here it is, the word is Hittikel. It is not Tigris. It is a faulty translation to go there. And it is not in the book of Jubilees. That's a translation. Jubilees says Hittikel, which is never Tigris. And Euphrates. Now, uh-oh, is this a trouble spot? Can this one reference, out of all we have shown you between the last video and this one, actually say the Hittikel is the Tigris? No, of course not. That wouldn't be logical. The ancient Hittikel River runs into the Persian Gulf and remains a valid dividing line. Yes, occult lore mentions between the Tigris and Euphrates over and over and over and over, but that is occult lore, not Bible. The Hittikel, which is never mentioned in any Sumerian writings ever as the Tigris, is not the Tigris nor an occult concept. It comes from Scripture, which defines it well, as we have already proven. The Hittikel in the Indian Ocean and Persian Gulf still fits this reference. No problem whatsoever. However, one cannot overturn all the many other references which are clear, and they are very clearly saying that the Tigris in Asher's mapping named the Tigris as the river, just as it does 27 times in the Old Testament, is most certainly not the Hittikel.
It would not fit in any sense. No. Verse 5. To the north of the Chaldees, to the border of the mountains of Ashur. To the north of the Chaldees, to Ashur. Perfect. All drawn right there. Verse 5. And the land of Arara. Ooh, wait a minute. Arara is not Ararat, is it? See, Jubilees uses the word to identify where the ark landed as well, just like Genesis. And it calls it the mountains, note, not mount, not mountain, but mountains, plural. A range, a mountain range of Ararat. But see, that's not what this word is, is it? It's Arara. So even Jubilees knows the difference between what is basically Armenia and the mountains there and the mountains of Ararat. They are not the same. Nor is Turkey. It doesn't fit. And you'll see if you watch where did Noah's Ark land, that the Ark had to have landed east of Shinar, or the Tigris River, east of it. And that's a major problem, because Mount Ararat in Turkey is northwest of there. You also find the Bible's very descriptive about when the Ark landed was the very flood peak. Therefore, the Ark could have only landed on the very tallest mountain. We deal with all that there in much detail. Go view that. The final territory is Lud. The mountains of Ashur and all pertaining to them, so north of Ashur, the mountains up there, so basically Armenia and those areas, till it reaches the Great Sea. That would be the Mediterranean Sea and basically modern Turkey, largely, and Armenia. And it till it reaches the east of Ashur, his brother. See, these, sometimes these repeat things to be very clear and very, um, very skilled, really, when you look at these directions. So there you have it. There it is, Shem's initial division of territories between his sons at the time of Babel, basically. Notice Elam received so much land, but remember... He's the oldest, and in time, the others branched out and migrated, such as Abraham and Ophir, stretching from the Mediterranean, actually all the way to the Philippines, from the very western border to the very eastern border, really defining that land. The sons of Eber did that, the Hebrews. If ever you hear that Ham or Japheth lives in either of these lands, that is a major encroachment. And it did take place. They are out of territory and cursed for what they did. We hope that this has provided some clarification on a host of things. And we've always wanted to get back to this topic. Some will ask, what about the rest of Asia? I mean, Shem received all of Asia. That's correct. He did. However... This was only the initial division of Shem at that time. All of Asia does belong to Shem and none to Japheth, none to Ham. Not a piece of it. When you understand this mapping, the entire paradigm of history comes into full focus. And in fact, Indonesia is actually not part of Asia or part of Shem because that's where the border is to the south. And you begin to see the reason history plays out the way that it does. Your perspective begins to broaden and you see through the synagogue of Satan and actually their claims, their tricks, and even that of Gog of Magog. Again, it's Gog of Magog, not Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39. There's a one demon named Gog being identified in that passage, another channel, really screws that up. Just because another YouTube channel cannot see any of these things, but continues to propagate the same bad theology with even worse stretches and doesn't bother to really research, you can discern through all of that nonsense and you'll know the truth. 
because you can do this. Thank you for watching our flood series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. You can support us on Patreon if you feel led as well. And this is helping to fund our conferences in the Philippines, which are going very well. We're very happy. Go to thegodculture.com for details on conferences and make sure you register. Also, like our new Facebook page at The God Culture space hyphen space original. That is our only Facebook page. Share this video with others because YouTube is not. Always remember to prove all things for yourself. Yahuwah bless all. Thank you.